Hi everyone, welcome to this talk. I'm Xiang Gao from National University of Singapore. I'm going to present our work feedback driven semi supervised synthesis for program transformations. This work was mainly done when Shraddha and I were interns at Microsoft. We have seen an emerging trend of tools and techniques that synthesize program transformation using example of code edits. For instance, Catfix has been developed at Facebook. It uses examples from code repository to learn bug fixes. And Blue Pencil from Microsoft uses examples to learn program transformation to automate repetitive code changes. It has been released in Microsoft Visual Studio as IntelliCode suggestions. Usually, those techniques tend to overfit to the example. That is, the synthesized program works on the given examples but cannot be generalized to other inputs. Let's first see an example of this problem in IntelliCode suggestions and our solutions to it. Hi everyone. I'm Gustav Suarez, and I'm going to show you a demo of IntelliCode suggestions. So I'm uh, in the middle of a refactoring here. I deleted this class, and now this method is an instance method of model. So I'm going to move model from here to here to fix this method invocation. And I have to do the same thing to the other invocations that were following uh, this uh, old pattern. Um, so let's go to the next location. Here is the next location. I have to do the same change. So, okay, I'm done here as well. This is kind of a repetitive task, right? It's boring and time consuming. But luckily, uh, IntelliCode was, was watching what I was doing and it produced suggestions for me to automate the rest of the change. So I can navigate to the next location and instead of applying the change manually, I can just look at the suggestion that IntelliCode produced, review it, and apply it. I can even apply all of them at once. Cool. Um, so IntelliCode uh, was in the background watching what it was doing, and uh, it used the, my changes as examples to synthesize a program transformation, and then used this program transformation to produce code changes in this file and show to me as suggestions. Um, cool, but uh, my job actually is not done yet. IntelliCode missed some locations. If I go up here in this file, we will see, yeah, this is another location that follows the same pattern, but IntelliCode did not produce a suggestion. It's a false negative. Uh, it's a different method, but they have to do exactly the same thing. Now I have to give another example to IntelliCode, and hopefully IntelliCode with three examples will synthesize a new program transformation and we automate the rest of the changes. But the more examples I have to give, the less uh, useful is this uh, feature for me because there are fewer locations to be automated. Um, but what if there was an easier way for me to demonstrate my intent? Uh, without having to provide the full uh, input-output example. For instance, the cursor location can indicate uh, an input where the transformation should be applied. Uh, and this is the key idea of this paper. We are proposing a semi-supervised synthesis technique that combines input-output examples with additional inputs extracted from different sources, for instance, the cursor location, to synthesize a program transformation. So now IntelliCode is using this technique and if I just start making the change to this location, IntelliCode will immediately produce a suggestion for me. Um, it uses the cursor location to extract the input, potential input, and the additional examples that I gave previously to synthesize this program transformation. In this way, I don't need to type this change entirely. I can just accept the suggestion and uh, finish my repetitive task using fewer examples. Um, I can apply all of them here. Uh, cool, now uh, Shank will explain in more details how this technique works. Thank you. Yes, now let's see what happened on this demo. 
As shown in the demo, we first manually perform two edits, and then Blue Pencil synthesizes a program for those transformations. In our case, we have a domain-specific language to specify the transformation program, but for simplicity, we describe the program as a template, which shows the structure of code before and after edit. In this template, x1, x2, and x3 are three identifiers, where x1 represents the method name, get model training permissions, x2 is the first argument model, while x3 represents the second argument. Since the value of x3 in those two edits are different, x3 doesn't have a uniform value in the program. However, the synthesized transformation using two edits may fail to transform some input, such as this one. It should be transformed via the same pattern, but Blue Pencil produce a false, false negative here. The main reason is that the predicate on x1 in the program is too specific. It requires the value of x1, that is the method name, must be get model training permissions, but the additional input have a different x1 value. Now let's see how our approach can be helpful for such kind of cases. Inspired by semi-supervised learning, which learn a model from both labeled data and unlabeled data, we propose a semi-supervised synthesis. Our semi-supervised synthesis generates program using both input-output examples and additional inputs. The input-output example corresponds to labeled data, while additional inputs correspond to unlabeled data. Our main insight is that the additional input can help us disambiguate how to generalize the transformation by providing more inputs that should be manipulated by the transformation program. Now we have another important question. How can we generate additional input? Here we propose to find additional input in a feedback loop. With the input output example synthesis engine first synthesis a program, which is then used to the input pool. If the program produces a false negative, uh, that is the input that should be transformed, but the program failed to transform. Then we add it as an additional input. This process continues and the program keeps refined with the goal of synthesizing a better program. Now let's first focus on the semi-supervised synthesis. Given a set of input-output examples and one additional input, our main idea is to use output generalization technique to generate the output for the additional input, and then we could synthesize program based on both given input-output examples and the additional uh, example using existing synthesis engine. In this example, Given uh, input output examples and additional input, our goal is first to infer the additional output, and then we can invoke existing synthesis engine like uh, Rafazi with the original example and the additional example. To infer the additional output, our first step is to perform provenance analysis. Provenance analysis aims to determine which fragment of output depend on which fragment of input. Specifically, we calculate a map between the input and output. Recall that we have synthesis a transformation. Actually, we could easily extract the input-output fragment mapping from the transformation program. In the running example, we have three maps, which corresponds to x1, x2, and x3. Then we can uh, we use anti-unification modular provenance to find the generalization of input and the additional input. Basically, the anti-unification algorithm compares the elements of two inputs and substitutes the different elements with a whole. Our algorithm works on ST, but for simplicity, we, sh we are showing as a code. In the running example, firstly, uh, we can see the method name are different. Therefore, 
they are replaced with a hole represented as x1. We then create two substitutions representing the operation for the input and the additional input respectively. Similarly, the second argument are also different. So they are replaced with a different generalization x3 and update the substitution. Different from traditional anti-unification, we just substitute the provenance node. This is to avoid overgeneralization, such as generalizing the whole input. As shown before, the synthesis program is too specific and cannot be applied to the additional input directly. Now we could use anti-unification to generalize the synthesis program. And unification generate two holes x1 and x3, which means the predicate on x1 and x3 in the program should be generalized. Therefore, according to the substitution, we generalize the predicate of x1 by substituting its value. Similarly, we should also modify the value of x3. Since the predicate on x3 doesn't have a value in the program, we don't need to change anything for x3. After the adjustment, we could then produce additional output by applying the program on the additional input. Here now we generate an additional example using output generalization technique. The census engine Jefferson will produce a better program by generalizing x1. The refined program can be then properly generalized. Now let's see how we can use the feedback loop to automatically find additional inputs. The first feedback could come from users, that is, we could involve human in the loop. In this setting, for a given input pool, we allow user explicitly specify the input she or he wants to transform, and hence we can then take the user provided input as additional input. Since specifying additional input might be a tedious task for users, we propose a semi automated feedback where user provided the location he or she wants to apply the transform and uh, automated feedback plays the rule to find the correct additional input. In the input pool, suppose user want to apply similar transformation at some locations, she or he could put the cursor there. The automated feedback will go through all candidates' uh, additional inputs at this location, for example, the whole invocation statement, the member access expression, or the variables. We will then determine the correct additional input using reward function. The reward function defines a distance metric to marrying the similarity between candidate additional input with the past examples. I will skip the formal definition of reward function here, which can be found in our paper. In this case, reward function determines the whole statement as additional input. So the census engine is then triggered with the invocation statements as uh, input uh, as additional input and the census program will be refined. At the same time, it will produce an edit suggestion at the cursor location. Actually, we have a fully automated feedback which doesn't even require the cursor location due to time limit. I will skip the fully automated feedback here. To evaluate our approach, we designed several experiments. The first experiment evaluated the effectiveness of semi-supervised synthesis in generating correct code transformations. We compared the transformation accuracy with and without additional input. The second experiment evaluated the effectiveness of uh, semi-automated feedback. Given a set of past edits and one cursor location, we evaluated the transformation accuracy. All the experiments are conducted on real-life code editing sessions from Microsoft developers. With the help of additional input, we found that our approach significantly improved the recall of baseline approach from 27% to 100% while retaining the high precision in generating correct code suggestions. In the second evaluation, uh, given a set of past edits and uh, cursor locations, 
out of 295 scenarios, our two only produce one false positive and three false negatives. On conclusion, existing program synthesis may produce a fitted program. To alleviate this problem, we propose a semi-supervised synthesis. We then propose a feedback loop to generate uh, additional input. We implemented our idea as a Visual Studio plugin. The evaluation results show that we can improve the transformation accuracy a lot. If you are interested in this paper, you can find more information about the Blue Pencil project and the Microsoft Pros team here. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you for your attention and I'm glad to take questions.